Hey guys, this is Dom from Pittsburgh Active, and today we're going to talk about demoing a bike. Let's get at it. I know there are people out there that kind of just go to a shop, kind of just buy a bike. All they do is read about it beforehand. I do want to talk about the importance about really demoing a particular bike or a particular suspension design or, or a type of bike before you actually ride it. Today I'm going to be talking with Tom. Hello everybody. And Tom is from Trailflow around here in Pittsburgh. He's got a little bit of a different take on how he runs his business, one that I particularly uh, respect. I think it's a better way of doing business, especially in the world of direct sales of online. I think the importance of the local bike shop is brought to a whole different level. And to me, that's all about demoing a bike. So that being said, Tom, give me your history on how you've done business in the past, what you are doing different now, and the importance of demoing a bike. This business here, Trowflow Bikes, is kind of a, a new venture. We've been in business now since uh, 2015, my past life, and you know, we didn't have a lot of demos available for uh, for people to ride. And I've always been an enthusiast, uh, really into the sport. And what I've always found was that most people don't really have an opportunity to ride some of these bikes. What brands so, are those? Um, here at Triple Bikes, we have uh, Yeti, we have Ibis, mm -hmm. uh, we have Intense, mm -hmm. um, we have Noli. Okay. And we have Evil Bikes. Those are some of our main brands. Taking that under consideration, uh, we'll do builds uh, any way you want it, uh, whether it be a, a, a full custom bike, uh, a factory build, uh, whatever you may want. Okay. Um, that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll get down to bolt by bolt builds for customers as well. Okay. Um, but getting back to demoing, uh, when, you, when you have bikes like that, uh, we just feel it's super important. Um, it's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. on the rider's part it of this and you should be able to ride it yeah i mean the, the more i really think about it and and i've been guilty of this so just so for you guys um and this is an admission on my part when i first um bought my 5010 i actually didn't ride it at all all i did was um kind of read about it and watched a whole lot of youtube on it so uh and and thank god it worked for me because i ended up loving that bike but I agree with Tom. I think uh, the more that I get to ride all these different bikes and to review these bikes, I wish I just took the time and the mountain biking trips to just open up my my knowledge about the brands, the suspension designs and all that kind of stuff. And another thing that's kind of really important, Tom, is getting to ride the bike in your home turf. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, we all see the reviews out there and I think that you can take a lot from those reviews. Um, I think it's always good um, if you are looking at a particular bike is to re read reviews. Riding it where you're going to ride it at is probably the most important thing that you can do. Or I think that has um, it's a lot of factors in play and, and obviously you know, trail conditions, uh, elevation, where you a bike that works great for me in Indiana might not work great for you here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah um, so, for sure. Uh, great bike all in all, yeah. but might not be the right bike for you here. That's right. Could be the right bike for you there. That's right. Um, so I think uh, location is key in selecting the right bike. So now what we're going to do is really go through the steps on what Tom does to certainly fit the bike for you before a demo ride. That being said, take these notes because the whole reason we're doing this is to encourage you to demo bikes and get out there. Uh, and the second is to educate you on what really um, you should expect, the service that you should expect from a demo or a fitting. That being said, demoing a bike is really, really important before you actually buy it. Um, Tom, why don't you run through what you do here for your customers uh, before they demo a bike just to make sure that it's fitted for them and everything is adjusted for that particular person. Absolutely. Um, first off, some of the first things that we will do is uh, obviously try to get an idea on the, the height of the rider. Um, 
a lot of times they're here in person so that's easy to do. Um, one of the things to kind of keep in mind is that uh, when you go out to demo bike, sometimes you're always not going to have your exact frame size. Um, you might be riding something in some cases that might be a little too small or a little bit too big. But I think uh, for a demo, in most cases, uh, you can make that work for you as long as it's not too far outside of your reach of comfort uh -huh. uh, on the bike. Just to get, be able to get out there and get a feel for you know how some of these suspension platforms feel, mm -hmm. um, how the, the component uh, setups feel, whether it's uh, you know your first time on the X01 drag train. Well, uh, and, and you know what, to, to add something to that, um, being in person, and, and I mentioned this in my video of the following and um, the high tower, nowadays the geometry is so different that someone of my short height of 5'6", five, 5'7", five, can actually ride 29ers and really be comfortable. That's another point about fitting that I think is worth noting. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and to that kind of that same point too, um, just know that also um, because you're a medium in a Yeti, you may not be a medium in an Ibis. That's true. Um, and so are so um, Geometry, uh, frame lengths, um, dimensions are kind of, uh, can be different from bike to bike. I can tell you personally, like I can, at 5'11", I feel pretty good on a, on a medium Yeti, mm -hmm. um, but I, I do not feel comfortable on a medium Ibis. It's too small for me. Okay. It's going to be different from bike to bike. So okay. just know that you may not always get, depending on what the selection is on where you're demoing the bike at, um, you might not always get that perfect frame size for you. Um, but in most cases, I think that you can find something that will work for, again, so that you can get a real feel for the bike, the suspension platform, how mm -hmm. it works, the drive frame that you might be interested in, mm -hmm. uh, brakes, handling. Uh, you can still get a good perspective on all of those things. Okay. The other thing, too. I would recommend everybody do is bring some pedals. Good point, good yes. point. Um, Main contact point. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, although uh, most places uh, in, in us here, we, I have a box of pedals uh, that I keep on hand. Anywhere from, you know, uh, just plain old flats to Crank Brother pedals and Shimano pedals. It's always good to bring your own because you're, you're the one that's comfortable with that. If you can, have, if you can bring along some comfort on your ride, uh, it's mm -hmm. going to make your ride more enjoyable, so I would recommend bringing some pedals. Okay, great. The biggest, uh, most important thing probably is to go ahead and set the suspension up. Probably the most complicated, I would, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, it can be. The rider's out on the ride, uh, a demo ride, and the suspension's not set for them correctly. Um, it's not going to be a good one. I don't care how good the bike is. Yeah. It will not overcome a bad suspension tune. And it doesn't have to be perfect because each rider is their own person. Um, and they their own riding style, you're saying? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so really the main thing is just getting a good baseline tune in mm -hmm. uh, the suspension um, so that the rider can go out and actually get a good feel for how that bike is going to perform. Okay. Uh, without that, like I said, it's not going to be a good day problem. Okay. Um, so just, you know, getting the rider's weight and going through and setting a baseline tune. Uh, with sag and rebound, uh, well, nine times out of ten, you know, get that person uh, a great feel for the bike and how it handles and get them out on the trail with a nice smile when they get back. That being said, I would recommend uh, certainly bringing your own um, air pump for the tires and um, a shock pump. I mean, it's one of those things if you already have um, experience with playing around with your own suspension. Um, you're gonna want to play around with it anyway uh, when you're out in the trail. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I can tell you a lot of guys will do that. The other thing that we'll try to do here for you as well uh, before you leave is set that saddle height. Try to make sure that that's set at, at least at a good, a good point that you can get off on the trail and get moving. Um, then if you have an Allen tool and you feel like you want to stretch out your legs a little bit more when you're out on the trail, you're really getting into it, uh, you, can, you can make those types of adjustments out on the trail. Um, so everything that you said there uh, is spot on mm -hmm. and a lot of riders will do that, um, especially with tire pressures. So how do you go about um, starting off with a recommended tire pressure for someone? Sure. Um, a lot of times, again, talking with the rider, uh, getting to know them a little bit about um, how they ride, the type of bike that they're riding now, mm -hmm. uh, will lend itself to that as well. Um, I think one of the main things is that if that person hasn't ridden uh, a bike, 
uh, like the one that they're demoing before. The type of bike, yeah. The type of bike. Uh -huh. um, and we'll go with the recommended tire and pressure. And with the experience, um, like I can tell you that I've ridden like every bike in the shop. Um, so I know their personalities, characteristics, how they handle, mm -hmm. uh, kind of what the ideal tire pressures are for each of them. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the person's weight, we can go from there and make sure that we have a pretty dialed in tire that's going to give them plenty of traction plus rollover. So then again, they can have a great time out on the trail. So again, that's probably just kind of taking a little bit of uh, the rider's experience and what they like and then combining it with our experience with the bikes make sure that we get them the right setup for the right bike that they're, that they're going to be demoing that day. One other thing to um, consider before you actually leave with the bike, take a quick spin around the parking lot. I know it's just a parking lot spin, but that should give you at least a sense of an idea if, if the shock is at least in the right direction or the right spot um, and things like that before you actually hit the trail. That being said, this beautiful Red Ibis Mojo is what I'm demoing today. Certainly watch out for the next video. Tom, I really want to say thank you. Thank you. Really, really cool shop. Thank you so much. Um, and watch out for more Ibis and everything else that Tom has here at Trailflow. Check out the website. It's on the description below. Comment, like, and share. I'll see you guys later.